Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Tool Teardown channel. Apologies for the very long absence. I think it's been about two and a half months. Um, life sort of got in the way with home renovations and everything else. Work was very busy so unfortunately I couldn't commit to uploading a lot of videos for you guys. I'm really sorry about it but um, a new year, a new plan. So we'll let, let's um, let's get straight back into it, shall we? So um, the idea is that we change things up a little bit. I've read the comments. I haven't responded to everybody yet. I'm sorry for that. But I think you guys indicate that you'd like to see some unboxing, you know, some testing of the tools as well as tearing them apart, which we keep doing. Um, so I thought, okay, and you guys also like keep asking for more and more INL stuff, which is fine by me, you know, it's, um, it's not a problem. So we keep doing that. And to kick things off this year, I thought, let's go big by doing an unboxing for you guys and a test. And then we're going to do a teardown. So we're going to probably do this in two videos. So one will be the unboxing and the testing of this device. And the second one will be the tearing it down part, as we usually do. So to kick off the new year, and the new, I'll have to, this is so big, the new Einhell Snow thrower cordless 36 volt snow thrower so this is a brand new device Einhell did a live stream last week which is about what a week ago <laughs> seven days ago uh, where they introduced this device this is the um, as it's shown on here the GEST 3640 LEE solo device as in the electric snow thrower or in German Akku Schneefräse um, I cannot read all the other ones, they'll take me all day. Um, a brushless motor, uh, as I said, 36 volt uh, machine with a maximum clearing width of 40 centimeters. And this one's that for there. And the 36 is the 36 volts of the motor. The brushless lithium iron for the batteries, obviously. Um, a maximum snow height of 20 centimeters it can deal with. And, um, we have a variable speed control between 1617 and 1917, so call it 3, 300 RPM speed difference that we can control with this device. Um, apparently it's feather light, six and a bit kilos. We'll, we'll put it on the scales and measure it. And uh, the throw of the snow is about six meters. So the, the, the snow that comes out the front here goes as far as six meters out of your way. Um, it's a solar device, so it doesn't come with a battery or the charger, so you literally just get the machine and then you have to get yourself some batteries um, for it, if you haven't already, and a charger obviously to charge up the batteries, otherwise you won't be clearing a lot of snow obviously. So yeah, let's um, take it out of the box and um, have a look inside, shall we? So like I said, it's not been opened yet, it's brand new. I'm not an unboxer, it's not my main profession. I take bits to bits and then we have a look inside of them. As in we tear tool downs on a tool tear down channel as per, you know, the, the things we do. But um, yeah, unboxing is um, not my, uh, my main special, uh, speciality. Not an expert anyway. Need a, bit, need a bit more practice. Um, yeah, this is not going to work, is it? It's so big. <laughs> what the hell? Why is it so big? So that's a lock, shall we? So yeah, there we are. That's uh, that's what it looks like. Hold on, let's get the cap flat over that way. We have some light in the uh, plastic. Wrappers. Okay. Uh, right. The newspaper. And then this is the uh, the actual device, I guess. Um, let's see if we can lift this out. There we go. And then what we have is a empty box. So what have we got? We have this, which is the main device bit. That. 
and these. Which is the bit that you hold. The handle, hey, eh? That's the word. So let's get the uh, the wrapper off it. I might be able to zoom in again now, now that massive box is out of the way. This is the, uh, the business end of the device. Let's just move that out of the way a little bit. So we've got the, I think a handle to grab it if you want to carry it. So this is the uh, plastic shovel that throws the snow around, the, uh, the, the powering bit of the snow, the snow plow or the trow, whatever it is. It's basically these three blades that will give you the option to throw it at an angle, either this angle. Whoa! Um, I have to lift it, so it's like a... It's a bit stiff, this. It's a lift. I guess so it doesn't wobble on you when you're having a bit of action going on. So you have it straight at you, so you're basically just throwing it straight out in front of you, so you keep doing the same bit, I guess, for people who get bored easily. And then um, you can throw it the other way, as in that direction. Um, the lighting is terrible here. Sorry, I'm filming this at night, because it's, well... Scandinavia in the winter it's dark a lot having a quick look at the handle so what I did notice is this white thing which I don't think is part of the assembly because it comes off like that I could be wrong but um, yeah that's that the cable interesting is um, a cloth reinforced cable with a silicon hose around it obviously because you use this in the winter you don't want to get water and stuff in there and then I don't know if this rubber snubber thing is going to remain part of it I don't think so because it's pre-cut and it doesn't look so pretty I guess it's all part of the protective shipping arrangement and then this is probably how it goes together and then it's part of the newspaper that comes with the device your manual obviously in many different languages again does it have to be in all this single-use plastic that you're just gonna throw away after I mean come on I know yeah, do your bit about the environment you advertise that your machines are all green but your packaging could yeah, probably be a little bit more considerate um, whoa. so yeah little um Let's see. There we go. Oh, hold on. I'm doing it wrong. The washer goes on the uh, side where you put the red um, fixture. I don't know. Let me let me know, guys, if you like garden equipment as well as uh, tools on the channel. I mean, at the end of the day, they are tools, uh, just for the garden. But, um, yeah, if you're not interested, then uh, let me know as well. Then we won't bother you again with them. But, um, yeah, I just thought it might be fun. And I saw an opportunity. It's a new device that not a lot of people have seen. I couldn't really find a lot of um, videos of it yet on the YouTubes. So I thought, you know, well, you know, add some value, obviously. Not rather than everybody else is. Oh, this is the new dinghy. Oh, I've tested it as well, like everybody else. Let you guys know, you know, I don't know if you pick up on it, but you see the amount of scratches in the in the metal. You can see there, the, the, the paint's come off. So, I'm having the treat here, they always say, don't don't be the first to buy it, because it's still got all the, um, you know, there as well, I mean, bloody hell. Not so sexy, eh? And I guess, because there's a little plastic dinghy at the end there, am I in the frame? So, um, without having an opening there, this probably goes in like so. There's a little peg there. I'm wondering if that's for storage, so you can sort of take it apart. In there, you have the two contacts. That'll go into the contacts that are in the uh, the pipe. So there's uh, oh, there's four actually. Look at that. There's four contacts in there, which is the uh, obviously the handle to control the whole uh, machine. And the power and the motors are in here because you want the heavy stuff to be at the bottom, so you don't have to carry it. Push the button, as in so, and then it click clicks in, and then 
it is, it is quite tight actually. Yeah, and then to secure it properly, so the little screw I think is to hold in the electronic piece, but again, we'll find out when we take it apart. Well, this is a nut and bolt. The other one had a washer with it. This one doesn't. The other one that we just assembled here um, is a washer. And this one hasn't. All right. So this one, the bolt fits into the hole there. It's got a little bolt hole, so that you don't need a spanner to screw it in place. I might want to reconsider this whole garden tool review slash unboxing stuff because it takes up a lot of space this stuff, so big. <laughs> anyway, and then the um it goes like that I guess, hand tight. I probably should have uh, for symmetrical Oh wait. I think I've put the handle the wrong way out. Um yeah, you're gonna be finding this funny, I don't hold on. Oh, well, let's see if I can put this down. So basically the machine is uh, facing the camera. Um, so is the handle. Um, so I think the handle needs to be on that side. So, it needs to, so let's just um, do, do that bit. It's facing this way as well as the, um, the machine. I'll take some pretty shots outside, which I'll put in now. And then... Um, To adjust the handle to hold the other one, you've got a little red knob thing there as well, and you can then um, sort of twist it and adjust the height of it. You have a little bit of wiggle room here, so this will be the lowest, this will be the highest. Let's put it somewhere there for now. Right, so now obviously we want to make sure it's all working. So for that we open the cap flap. bit squeaky anyway put in there the other one in here they're fully charged So you obviously have your, I mean the tag is going to we'll remove that, but um, yeah, you got your safety switch, fingers, toes, <laughs> left and right handed so you can, um, and then you got your speed control here, so from uh, VMAX 6 where it's got like this positive detent, all the way down to 1 which is your lowest setting. So one of the other key factors of obviously having a, a good usable tool is, is weight. So this is now zero, this is going to be kilograms. So let's put the device on the scales. We can make it set. So we've got 7.65 including two 4 amp hour batteries. And these are the uh, the old style four amp hour batteries, a little bit dirty, well used. So this is the next day, and um, I'll give this baby a test, see what she can really do. So let's have a look at how deep the snow is so we've got pretty much precisely 25 centimeters of snow in uh, in the back garden here at a minute which is um, five centimeters more than what the specification of the machine are saying that we can deal with so uh, let's see if she can uh, if she can cope so the snow is um, is fairly fresh We've got two of the uh, old style 4 amp hour batteries in here. These are fully charged. And there we go. So they got the, the fully, all three of the three lights on. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a go.
it's all right. I thought it was going to struggle a bit more, but it seems to keep um, keep the power not too bad. I mean, you have to push on it a bit, so you have to put some force on it to make it go down into the snow. Um, I just tried to do two layers, and it appears to be a little bit easier. So, if you want to make your life a little bit easier, do two layers if you like. Um, of like 10 centimeters to, to make it not such a hard job. I think the other thing that doesn't help is that this is grass, under here is grass, so the surface is a little bit um, uneven, it's frozen, so um, it's probably a little bit difficult than if you do this on paved surfaces. But um, So the snow build up inside isn't too bad actually, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. Um, I have this on straight uh, exit so we'll give it a go at an angle all these passes were on setting one on the handle so got setting one so we're going to give it a bit of a of a go at a um, higher setting see if she she deals with it a little bit better because when you really push on it you can hear the motor is is, is obviously working a bit so let's um Let's give this, I don't know, full power, see what happens. So I've managed to clear out this bit, went a bit deep there, but um, yeah, so basically nice little square, so that's where the, the tripod is, where the road is, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a uh, labour, I mean, if you look at the snow, obviously, yeah, this is more than 20 centimetres, obviously, um, so the old girl uh, is struggling a bit, but um, you know, so far, we're doing all right. We're down to one bar. If this was 20 centimeters of snow, instead of, we'll measure it again, but I think it's more like 30, then we probably would have been able to do the whole, um, the whole driveway with this. But um, we'll keep going and see how far we get with it. So, let's see what we're dealing with here. That's, uh, yeah, about 27 centimeters of snow. And uh, up here it's actually, uh, up here it's actually more than 50, I mean. Yeah. It's just a bit of a trooper, but um, we're dealing with it okay. So well, that's it, she's empty.
See how that one's uh, blinking away. buttons are a bit rubbish. That one is still okay but because it's a 30 volt, 36 volt machine obviously it needs both batteries to be able to um, work. So summary on what we think of this uh, device, this machine. Um, as such it's it's okay um, it's a little heavy on the on the bottom side on the, on the on the business end of the device. Clogging up with the snow is not so much a problem um, the directional switch, however, which obviously you, you pull up and then you can turn it one way um, into the center or onto the side, is in this way or the other way. It, um, it didn't want to go into one of two directions outside. Um, I don't know if there was snow in there somewhere. But it, it wouldn't engage into the, um, it was okay in one direction, but not so much in the other. So that's another sort of, I don't know, but when I'm cleaning the driveway or the walkways around the house, you know, you want to, depending on which direction you take, you might want to switch this halfway through you. So I assume that you should be able to change this whilst you're using the device. Then obviously the variable speed control, which goes from one all the way to six. And then you have in, in setting six, you have the, um, the maximum power and the positive detent, which you can hear when you, when you sort of click it in place. I've tried it on the lowest setting. You can hear the machine is struggling a little bit with the amount of snow. So yeah, what I'm basically trying to say is, it's nice that you have the option to adjust it, but you tend not to really use it. You just run it on full power all the time. So the handle as such is good. You tend to use this device obviously with snow outside the house. Typically that happens in the winter. Uh, I've not really seen snow on the ground at plus 20 degrees. So you tend to wear gloves, is what I'm saying. Um, with that even, it's a good comfortable grip. The soft grip function here um, helps with that um, to an extent, I guess. Um, it's comfortable, there's not a lot of vibrations in the handle, so that's good. Um, the safety switch goes both ways. So both left and right handed people can use it. Um, you know, once you press it, you don't have to hold the safety switch. You just hold the handle and um, off you go. Um, there's a good long grip on it. So if you tend to hold it up here or down here, that's fine. You know, up to personal preference. And then with the adjustment of the secondary handle, um, so we got, whoa. So we got the, um, the option there with this knob to, um, to lower it or raise it. Um, thing is, it's very difficult to adjust, but when you tighten it up side to side, it's still like very easy. So it's it's a bit unstable during use because you tend to just, you know, you push on this device. You're not pulling on it, you push it into the snow. So you want this to be solid. And when you hit a little bit of resistance in the snow because of a lump of ice or whatever not, this tends to go one way or the other. So yeah, it gives you a little bit less confidence in, into steering the device properly. So personally, I say I'd, I'd like to see this made out of the aluminium extrusion that they use on their um, bush mowers and stuff. Um, it's oval, so it doesn't tend to then twist because the, the molding stops it from happening. Um, and the aluminium is, is screwed together, you know, in the shaft rather than this, this sort of um, fixture, which you can see the bottom, the bottom half of the shaft is, is still, and this is all wobbling like, so, you know, you push on this and every time you push this thing flexes. So it doesn't inspire confidence as such. This, this shaft bit would be my biggest criticism of the device. Uh, the battery compartment, you know, is, is good to use. There is no, um, water that gets in. I mean, yes, I did check during runtime to see what battery life would be as part of the test. This is not probably no normally something that you do. You, you stick your batteries in it, you keep going until you either finish with the job or the batteries die on you and then you swap them out. Um, so there's normally no water getting in there, but obviously when you, when you keep opening it up and close it up, then obviously, yeah, um, snow can get in there, it melts and then can cause obviously issues. 
the compartment is deep however so the water can't really reach the batteries there's a gap between the bottom of the battery and the actual bottom of that compartment so the water will be lower than the battery um, the the handle to grab it with I've not really used it I guess it's more a thing of carrying it into the garden or onto your driveway from the shed but um, yeah I don't know I just tend to hold it on the handle uh, on the handle down the bottom um, it's, it feels more natural plus the device is, is balanced especially with the batteries in it um, when you carry it here all the weight is on that side and with this long stick as well it tends to just tilt over so it's very uncomfortable holding so you end up having to carry it with two hands whereas if you grab it here you can just lift it one handed then the only other thing that I did notice now I don't know how much of a problem this is going to be where you live uh, from wherever you watch this um, but up in Scandinavia it's very normal that in the winter they not use salt to um, grit the roads with but they actually use grit as in little stones little sharp stones um, because at minus 15 or minus 20 salt doesn't really do anything it can't melt the amount of snow and ice so it's pointless using such an expensive material to clean your roads with if it doesn't work so that's why they use little stones the only problem is that they get jammed in between the wheels so that the rotating part and the static part of the machine as you can see here there was some stones that got trapped in there and chafed the edge um, quite quite a bit snow build up was alright it was, it was here and here but nothing major um, so you could just use this until you finish with cleaning up the driveway or your walkways or whatever and um, that was it no problems there there's no wheels it just it just runs on these pieces of plastic so they will wear in and um, you will see marks on there so yeah all in all for 200 euros it's okay this device gets used once twice a year on a snowy morning on a on a weekend day or whatever hey to get out and about and do some stuff have a chat with the neighbors it's okay, it's okay for that. For people who live in an area like where I live, where you expect to have snow on the ground four months out of the year and, you know, it can get up to a meter on a good year, this is a little bit under underdefined, underspecified for that sort of need. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit out of his comfort zone here. But I thought I'll, I'll give it a proper test for you guys. For those of you who want to obviously know how this performs, what it can do, it's a lot easier than having to shovel it by hand, believe me. So for that, I'll give it a thumbs up. There is some improvement points. The major, the major concern I have with this device is the floppy handle. I mean, honestly, that's just a, almost a design flaw, I think. I mean, I guess they made it for packaging reasons, transportability perhaps. But in all honesty, how many people are going to carry this in the back of their car around to go to neighbors' houses and clean their driveways? Um, I don't know. Having a one-piece hand, uh, yeah, one-piece handle to use it, it would have been a lot more sturdier and a lot more easier and a lot more convenient. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of this unboxing and testing stuff as well, let me know. Uh, if you say don't bother, there's plenty of other people doing it already. Uh, we're just sticking to the fact of opening the tools and see what's inside, how good they are, what's hidden underneath the bonnet. You know, we're going to have a look at this next time. Let me know as well. For now, um, stay safe, keep well, be nice to each other. Um, you know, we obviously know what's going on in the Ukraine at the minute. Sad, sad situation. So, um, yeah, we try to avoid that. You know, we just have fun in our sheds, playing with tools.